Hi, this is Brian Oliva at Gethsemane Music. Today we're going to show you how to install Firmware Update 1.1.0 on your Subharmonicon using a Mac. The first step is to go to the Moog Music website and log into your account. Once you're logged in, go to your account data and look for your Subharmonicon under your instruments. Go to the Firmware tab click that and it will open up and show all the firmware available. Select the latest revision version 1.1 and click on it and it will download. Once you download the zip file find it in your binder window and expand the folder so you can see the files in it. The files included would be three sysx files for the firmware as well as a PDF file with the complete instructions and some additional PDF files with some new patch books uh, that they're including with the setup. We're also going to need a program to send the MIDI data to the Subramonicon. So we'll be using SysX Librarian as recommended by Moog for Mac applications. And we're going to copy the three SysX files to the window in SysX Librarian. The next step will be to connect the subharmonicon to the computer, but Moog recommends not using a regular USB hub to do that because they've had issues with it. So we're going to start by plugging the dongle that came with the subharmonicon into the uh, MIDI jack in the lower left hand corner of the patch bay and connecting a standard 5 pin DIN MIDI cord to that. At the other end, we're going to be using an iConnect interface and we'll plug the other end of the cable into the MIDI out of the interface. We're now ready to start sending data using the SysX librarian. Since we're using the iConnect interface, we need to select the proper port, in our case iConnect MIDI DIN 1 as the output and then we're going to send the firmware invalidate file first. This file is only six bytes long and it goes pretty quick so when you hit play you might see one of the green lights on the interface flash but what you should notice on the subharmonicon is that the sequencer number one light starts flashing. That'll tell you that the unit is now in boot loader mode but the old firmware still needs to be erased. So the second file to go is firmware erase. You send that the same way. Again another 6 byte file. You might see the green lights on the interface flash once or twice. But now the subharmonicon sequencer 2 light will be flashing to indicate that the file was received and it's now ready to receive the firmware. So now we select the firmware itself and send that. You should see a steady stream of flashing green lights on the interface now as the data is sent. This file is considerably bigger. should take between two and a half and three minutes or so to, uh, to send. As it's sending, you'll notice that the sequencer two LEDs will fill up, lighting progressively from left to right to indicate the firmware file is being received. Once the firmware is finally received, the Step 3 LED of Sequencer 1 will blink a few times to indicate successful firmware installation. And then the Subharmonicon should reboot and its customary light show uh, should uh, return and it will be ready for use. We hope you found this video useful. If you have, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thanks for watching.